Arg! So you want to be a pirate? You want to start hoarding that digital booty? Well, landlubber, my crewmate's gonna set you right on what kind of ship you'll need, your crew complement, and what kind of provisions you're gonna need to bring along on your voyage. Maybe I'll even let you peek at my treasure map. He's gonna tell you a tale about the digital booty called Private Torrents and where to find these shiny baubles. Ah, but be warned, matey. Woe to all who enter here. Private Torrent trackers are not for the faint-hearted. Now let's cast off. Well, that Captain Mick Claus is one intense guy. Hi, and welcome back to Tech from the Trenches with Mike Harvey. I'm Mike Harvey, and apparently a crew member this week. <laughs> please support us by pushing all the buttons below so you don't miss an episode, and please share your feedback. We appreciate your support. So, private torrent tracking. What is it? Well, before we get into what private torrent tracking is, let's cover the basics and discuss what a torrent is. A torrent, by classic definition, is a fast-moving stream of water or other liquid. In digital terms, a torrent is a file sent by the BitTorrent protocol. And the BitTorrent protocol is a communication protocol for peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, commonly referred to in the tech world as P2P. Torrents and the BitTorrent protocol are intended to be fast. Peer-to-peer -peer communication refers to the transfer of information between two parties or peers with no intermediaries. Essentially, this means the file or in this case torrents shared over P2P are hosted and made available by the sharer for the purposes of retrieval by the receiver or recipient. The speed of the transfer is only dependent on the resources, primarily the internet upload from the provider and the download of the receiver of both speeds of both parties. And now that we understand the basics of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and what a torrent is, we can discuss what exactly private torrent tracking is. Private torrent tracking is basically the indexing of torrents available to a private group using the BitTorrent protocol. It is, in essence, a private website with a list of stuff you can download. So why private groups? Interesting question. Well, because most files shared over the BitTorrent protocol, such as TVs, movies, music, and even software, are copyright material. In essence, private torrent tracking is mostly used for the sharing of copyright material and is mostly in violation of copyright law. In theory, keeping membership closed and private insulates those people that are pirating the copyright materials from litigation. In theory, clearly the pandemic increased the interest and proliferation of private tour tracking in 2021. TV shows being the most prolific content and according to Torrent Freak, represented nearly half of all PTT traffic in 2021 with an average of more than 7 billion visits per month. People needed something to do during the downtime, and many clearly got desperate despite the availability of streamable content everywhere. I guess a lot of folks ran out of binge-watchable stuff. Now, according to prolific users of private tour and tracking sites, there are many benefits to their use. The two primary benefits cited by almost all users or the quality of the content versus public trackers in terms of volume, accessibility, and durability of the content. This just means that private trackers are better managed, resulting in a better end user experience. The basic premise of private torrent tracking clubs is that everyone contributes by providing content through seeding, which is essentially hosting content on your private network and making it available to all other club members. And you must give more than you take to join a private torrent tracker. You must also be referred by an existing member. In essence, it's a private digital society that shares a common interest in the kind of booty they prefer, like TV shows, movies, music, and software. And these PTTs often cite security as a benefit, though I would argue it's security through obscurity, which means they let you hide in the shadows or wear a mask, eyes wide shutty kind of stuff. And there are many torrent trackers. But as Captain Miklaus would point out to you, you need a large fast boat with lots of storage and maybe a lawyer on retainer in your crew. If you're interested, see the info section below for links to the most popular PTTs in the categories they cover, not that I'm promoting these. So I remember when the BitTorrent protocol was introduced back in the early 2000s and I dabbled a bit but I saw little practical use for the casual user and virtually none for the enterprise. So I never really took it any further. While my investigation of PTT for this episode 
episode was an eye-opener in terms of the massive growth over the last 20 years, I'm not surprised at how it's being used. To me, for the most part, this PTT stuff is gray web or banditry, pure and simple. And while you may be able to cite examples where the content being delivered is not stolen and or not an infringement on copyright law, let's be honest, those cases are exceptions and not the rule, and you know it. I'm not saying I don't use private torrent trackers for moral reasons. Thankfully, I've personally never considered them for purely practical reasons, so I never got to that bridge over the moral bottomless chasm thing. For me, it just boils down to a few key points. Number one, time. There is no free lunch. You will need to commit time to the identification, application, setup, and management for a private torrent tracker to work for you, like a job. So while I like TV, movies, and music, I can get what I need from a streaming service for a few bucks a month and use my time to build stuff and be productive. Two, resources. You need fast internet and a lot of file storage for this to work. My technical resources for my day job, I don't really have the resources to spare for something like this, especially with the trade-off of cost using a streaming service to get what I need. Third, risk. As a technical architect, I am risk averse by nature. I don't take unnecessary risk. And as a security minded person, I believe that security through obscurity is weak security. Not to mention the fact that PTT users need to be wary of copyright trolls whose sole purpose in life is to get you into litigation, AKA sue your ass. So yeah, no thanks. So even if the time, resources, and risk all made sense to me, I would not join a private tour and track because the basic premise just feels shady to me. While I firmly believe in individual privacy, I also believe in the rule of law. And as a software developer, I can't be so duplicitous as to justify stealing someone else's stuff and expect them not to steal my stuff or anything for that matter. It's a golden rule thing, but I'm probably dating myself with Bob McAllister and Wonder and all of that nonsense. But those are my reasons. Clearly, the popularity of private torrent trackers means there are millions of others like Captain Miklos with a different perspective. Being a pirate, though, is more than just a fashion or diction choice. At least now, if you want to make the lifestyle decision to be a pirate, I hope you understand it's not all shiny booty and endless rum. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think. See you next time on Tech from the Trenches. Now go build something awesome.